Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Shinrin Yoku, and Sacred Geography, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update, Thanksgiving edition, Thursday, November 24th, around 1.30 p.m., 2022. How Halley's Comet is linked to a famine 1,500 years ago. Well, that's an interesting story, but the big story, happy Thanksgiving. Be grateful for what you have and help others. Heavy snow and major travel impacts for Thanksgiving and Friday. Keep calm. It's boom time. There is a significant storm headed down to southern New Mexico. And this morning, it's quiet for most of the state, but snow has begun in the Raton area of southern Colorado. I-25 at Raton Pass is already snow-covered and slick, with ongoing snow expected today. This will make travel very difficult through Friday. Strong winds have also begun in the Northeast Highlands, which will lead to blowing and drifting snow and low visibility. And that's not all. We have significant snow possible across the Pacific Northwest through Tuesday. The most likely location for this snow will be the Cascades, and heavy rain could reach as far as Southern California by Monday evening. We'll have the full, full forecast in just a minute as another historic Arctic outbreak for Canada and the U.S. Well, fierce freeze forecast for Europe as well, including the U.K., as two Russian volcanoes stir. <laughs> Say it ain't snow. It is. Winter storm warning issued for parts of New Mexico. Here's what you need to know. It's about to snow. Take a look at the GFS model here. We see snow tip, uh, gonna be dipping down from the Pacific Northwest up in BC. And as the snow moves south today, from uh, e there in southeastern Colorado, it's gonna move down into the Taos region and then into some of those burn scar regions where those major fires happen, all the way down into West Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. And it looks like the storm may stall out there, and some regions could be picking up pretty heavy totals here for an early season storm like the 16 to 18 inches up in the mountains there. Maybe in Ruidoso, perhaps. And then the snowy pattern continues through the beginning of next week. Here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Heavy snow moving into the Pacific Northwest. It is looking like a triple dip La Nina forecast all the way into the first week of December. And we could be seeing... A white Christmas for many of the 48 states here. Ho, ho, ho. As a brutal cold snap grips East Coast, we're talking Australia and flood emergencies continue. Weather extremes continue to be felt across the East Coast of Australia as multiple states shiver through a brutal cold snap a week out from Sama, Wadabama, as widespread flooding indoors. As chilly conditions grip the East Coast, a community in New South Wales is being told to evacuate as waters rise, and South Australia is bracing for its own emergency. Incredible scenes are playing out across Victoria snowfields, with the Alps transformed with heavy dumpings of snow. In 48 hours, 30 centimeters has fallen on Mount Bueller, with similar conditions at Mount Hotham in Falls Creek. Melbourne has recorded three days below 14C for the first time since November 1965. I'm sure they're feeling alive. Seismic update. We got some rumbling above Iceland. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Overall, no quakes of note. This is Mentone, Texas. This is deep well injection from fracking. Nothing out of the ordinary. Here we are at the Iceland seismic map, and you can see there's some activity here still continuing now for months near Ostia volcano, as well as on the Reykjanes Peninsula, and a little bit of here happening in the Tiranus fracture zone in the last few hours. But overall, seismicity is low. So let's take a closer look at the Batna Yokel Glacier where Grimsvolten and Bartabunga are. No activity on the glacier where those volcanoes are. But out here where Ostia is to the north is another very old volcano where all this activity is happening. Here's where Ostia is, and we could just pan in here. There's Lake Ostia. But if we come over here to this mountain, this is where all the seismic activity is at Hudebrid. It looks like an old cinder cone there. And so we might be seeing some new volcanic activity at that old volcano right there. Take a look at that. So that's where all the seismic activity has been happening for weeks now, six, seven weeks, and quite significant. But as you can see, albeit it has been reduced from a peak a little while ago. So we'll keep a close eye on Iceland for you and maybe you just learned a little something about Iceland geography, perhaps. Worldwide Volcano News Update. 
Nothing spectacular happening worldwide with uh, normal volcanic activity. Fuego, Popo, Suanosima, Sangue, Nevados de Ruiz, Sabancaya, Semisapoichnoi. They've re reduced the aviation color code to yellow there. And here we have a Cotopaxi volcano in Ecuador with strong degassing continuing. And that's a risk of impending explosion remaining high. Wow. Now, since the explosive eruption occurred on the volcano on the 21st of October, a strong constant degassing continues to be active from the summit vent. Surveillance cameras located on Shikunlagua, northeast, and Ruminuaha, northwest volcanoes, observe gas and steam plumes that have been rising two kilometers above the crater. Although the activity is still characterized as low level, ground deformation data following the pattern of deflation on the western slopes rather than inflation portrayed as blue in the SAR image. So a little bit of deflation happening and not inflation at the volcano. What's going on there? Cotopaxi, strong degassing, still occurring. Space weather news update. Wow, the sun is gone silent. X-ray flux here showing in the low B range with the very sad looking sun here. There is no imminent geomagnetic activity in the three-day forecast. So all is quiet on our sun as we approach solar max. Now, I did do an update on the condition of the sun yesterday on magnetic reversal news, so it'll be linked after this video. Now, eerie green fireball detected hours before smashing into Lake Ontario in the dead of the night. A renegade meteor flared into Earth's atmosphere in the wee hours of November 19th, creating a bright green fireball in the night sky over the eastern U.S. and Canada. And in fact, it's the sixth asteroid impact we actually saw coming. Here's the brief. On November 19th, asteroid 2022 WJ1 became one of the many small asteroids to strike Earth, but only the sixth we have ever saw coming. For the second time this year, humankind predicted an asteroid impact. The approximately one meter rock caused no harm and burn up in the sky above Toronto as a striking fireball, sometimes known as a bolide. The detection warning and advanced observations of this asteroid illustrate our rapidly increasing ability to warn of asteroid impacts. So that's good news. And there'll be links to all this information and you can read the in-depth survey of what occurred. Um, Let's just get a blow up here. Here's the time lapse of that bolide. Time lapse, a photograph of the 2022 WJ1 taken by astronomer Robert Worky in Ontario. Good work, Worky. <laughs> now, did you ever wonder when the first bakers were? I did. And a few years ago, they came out with this discovery about the first bakers. And they determined about 14,400 years ago during the bowling Alarod warming. In the Black Desert of Northeast Jordan, someone was tinkering with the recipe for the perfect pita flatbread. So three years ago, the date for the first breads were 14,400 years ago. And now a new, and here we'll leave you links to all the, the discovery uh, and the articles. And the site has a pretty cool name, Shabaikwa One in Jordan. At Shabaikwa One archaeologist site in Northeast Jordan, Researchers had discovered the charred remains of flatbread baked by hunter-gatherers 14,400 years ago. And then, just three years later, boom! The oldest cooked leftovers ever found suggest Neanderthals were not only foodies, they were bacon flatbread. Yes, can you believe that? Pancake flatbread with nutty tastes is the first evidence of complex cooking and pretty complex at that. These Neanderthals cooked these meals 70,000 years ago, obliterating the 14,400 years for the first baking. In fact, this plant material found at Shanidar Cave in northern Iraq, which is famous for its burial of Neanderthals surrounded by flowers, contained recipes that included wild nuts, peas, vetch, a legume which has edible seed pods and grasses were often combined with pulses like beans or lentils. The most commonly identified ingredient, and at times wild mustard to make the plants more palatable. Pulses, which have the naturally bitter taste, were soaked, coarsely ground, or pounded with stones to remove their husks. 
and then made into flatbread. Isn't that insane? This is a 70,000-year-old, maybe it was a restaurant. Who knows? Now, how Halley's Comet is linked to a famine 1,500 years ago, Leah and I are going to go in great detail this Saturday on the radio show on the topic. So we'll have all the links below if you want to get up to speed. And back as early as 2004, astronomers were unraveling a mystery of the Dark Ages. And undergraduates figured out, using some historical information, that a comet in the 6th century caused a nuclear winter. And then more research ensued. And a paper in 2010, Cosmic Catastrophe in the Gulf of Carpentaria, revealed the truth that accounts from the distant past have recorded stories of a global climate cooling event that lasted 18 months beginning in March of 536 AD. And debate ensued for decades about whether this event was volcanic or of extraterrestrial impact. And we will get into that on the radio show. It was a comet, two of them. And they hit just south of Australia causing massive tsunamis. Another interesting paper I, I found uh, doing some research, Twin Sons in Australia, Aboriginal Traditions. And I'll leave you links to the entire paper. It's pretty cool. The oral traditions of Aboriginal cultures across Australia contain reference to the presence of multiple suns in the sky at the same time. Now, explanations of this have been largely regarded as symbolic or mythological rather than actual observations of natural phenomena. But these scientists, well... Not only do they look at the evidence, they come up with a pretty good explanation of what they were seeing. And it was sun dogs, where sometimes it looks like three suns at once are in the sky, or more than one, depending on the angle and where you're looking at it. It's not Nibiru. It's ice crystals. Now California looks to ban all gas and diesel trucks. So get out while you can before you starve to death. As vaccinated people now make up a majority of COVID deaths. Those are the facts, and that's a boom. To knowledge, proper prior planning prevent piss-poor performance. Happy Thanksgiving. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons, who support the work we do. We love you. And the heroes that share these videos. Have a wonderful holiday, and we'll see you soon. And that's a boom.